Good evening. How is everyone? See some of the usual suspects tonight. Sound okay? Video okay? Hope everyone's having a good holiday season. I am. I got my Cavoitier right here. Yeah. Those of you under 25 won't get that reference. <clears throat> anyway, welcome to my third live stream. Tonight we're going to build an alchemist workshop. I forget who suggested this. It was someone on my Facebook page, but it was an excellent idea. Uh, let's see here. Make sure the chat's working. Everything loud and clear. Good. All right, and as a reminder, the chat will be about 30 seconds behind. So, so the video, I'm seeing your chat like 30 seconds later. So that's why if, it, if there's a bit of a delay, that's why. All right, so uh, we're going to make an alchemist workshop. We're going to do five small crafts that you can put together in a room that would make an alchemist workshop. Here is a look at what we're going to make. All right, the top left, that's obviously a shelf with some potions on it. Below that is sort of a totem with like a Tesla orb on it. To the right is a reagent bin, gold, silver, and diamond. To the far right is an enchanting table. And then at the bottom is a brewing station. So we're going to make all five of those tonight. Uh, if you have questions as we go along, you just put them in the chat or feel free to just talk to each other if you just have me out in the background. I understand that too. And every few minutes I'll look up from what I'm doing, check on the chat, see if there's questions and answer them. Uh, before I go over to my new workbench, um, which is back there, so I'm going to have to move the camera, um, but I won't be able to, uh, you know, show you things on the screen. So before I go, I'm going to be talking about two bead products that we use to make the potions. And here they are. So the one on the left is this uh, rainbow bead. It comes in a half circle case, and I got it at Michael's. If you're not based in the U.S. or, or uh, don't have Michael's around, this can be got online. The brand is Cousin. You can see there at the bottom of the label, it's Cousin. And these are glass rainbow beads assorted. And then to the right is these Toho Japanese seed beads. The size is 6 slash 0. I have no idea what that means, but this is the exact size that I have, and they're perfect for me. Um, these ha this picture I have happens to be glass ones, but I have metal ones. Uh, the point is, they're made by Toho, and the size is 6 0, and it's called a seed bead. All right, so let's see how many we have so far. 29 tuned in. Good, welcome everyone. All right, so I think that's about it. Oh, right, of course. Everything we make tonight, all five items, will go to a raffle winner. Later on, I'm gonna give you a keyword and you need to go to my Facebook page, Wylock's Armory, and there's already a post there. I made it a little while ago and it says, post the keyword here. So later on, I'm going to tell you what the keyword is. If you go and put a comment on that post, then you'll be entered for the raffle. I'll then use a random number generator, pick a, num pick a name, and then uh, sometime in the next week or two in my next episode, I'll announce the winner, and then uh, you'll get the stuff that we make tonight, um, the stuff we're making here in real time. All right, so uh, feel free to post any questions or anything. I just need like 20 seconds to move the camera over there, and we will get started. boundaries and know where I'm working. All right. <clears throat> Gustavo says Pathfinder or D&D? &D? Uh, having done both, I prefer D&D. &D. I love 5th edition. I think they nailed it with 5th edition. All right. So what should we begin with first? First, we're going to talk about how I do wood planks. All right. I've covered this before, and I, I refer to a lot of my episodes from the uh, Potion Vendor. That was episode seven, if you're not familiar with my channel. But we'll go ahead and prepare one in real time. All right. So this is your standard popsicle stick. All right. Uh, you can buy like a thousand of them for a few bucks for from the crafting store. And this is what I use to make wood planks, not foam. This is a wood chisel. Um, 
You can use this, uh, a screwdriver, although this is a screwdriver is not meant for what we're about to do and it'll probably blunt the screwdriver. Uh, you could use proper carving tools, anything will work really, but we're just gonna take this and I'm going to rake in some wavy lines. Now the lines, none of the lines should go the whole length and they should end and stagger and overlap with each other to make sort of a, a nice fake wood grain. I have a nice $20 webcam here, so I don't know if you'll be able to see this real well. But there it is. Okay. Now, next step, I uh, just need some scrap for a palette. Uh, use this. <clears throat> Black paint. Where is it? Where is it? Let's use this one. Okay. And we're just going to base it in black. Very easy. Base the whole thing in black and then you let it dry. Now it would be pretty boring t TV here to have you watch, literally watch paint dry. So what I've done is prepared this earlier. Here's a stick that already has the uh, grain in it that I did earlier today. And it's dried black. All right, quick tip for you. This is my uh, this is my black paint. I bought <coughs> the big thing of Americana black. I also bought Craft Smart. I don't recommend this. Um, having seen the two, this one's almost dark gray. The pigment is not as strong as Americana. But anyway, um, the paint flows so much better if it's like one part water and ten parts paint. So. I take this, I dump it in here, and then a spritz of water, mix it up, and then I don't have to ever worry about going, you know, to my water cup and then back to your water cup. It's already mixed up and it's at the perfect consistency to give me one coat coverage. So anyway, uh, here is our popsicle stick. Got the grooves carved in it, and it's based in black. All right, got some more. Ah, oh, John R is here. Erasmus and Arlax. All right. My standard wood kit, actually, uh, if anyone knows um, Ryan Biesecker on the uh, Facebook group, the Guild Facebook group, he actually came up with this kit. But it's burnt umber, followed by terracotta, followed by honey brown. So the first thing we do, and where is that brush? I think this is the one. All right, so if you're new to painting uh, or you're not familiar with dry brushing, um, dry brushing is where you load up the uh, paint on the brush, okay, you dip it in and it's globbed on there. Then on your palette, you work off a lot of the paint, in fact, most of the paint, to the point that it's almost dry, or really that it is dry. And then you can go and hit your piece. Now dry brushing is used for, we're actually gonna use it in a moment, but with the burnt umber, that's not what you want to do. You want to load up the paint, work a good amount of it off, because we're not doing a base coat, but still a solid amount on there. And then let me check my angle here. Yeah. Then you want to strike at it perpendicular to the stick so that the brushes, so that the bristles skip over the grooves that we just carved and that those stay black, which is going to create depth for us. Okay? So I'm just going to start nicking at it like this. And you can see the brown color starting to build up. Uh, this actually is much easier to do than it looks. Um, I'm at a weird angle here, making sure I'm on camera. And you do get a knack for exactly how much paint you need. But this should end up being, I would say, like an 80% coverage of brown. It should be. All right. The exact brand I'm using is Folk Art. I like theirs because theirs is really, really thick. Uh, some of their colors, including Burnt Umber, is I think the best. Yeah, you really can't see it that well on the camera, but anyway, that's uh, Burnt Umber. All right, what do we got going on? Didn't know I did live shows. Well, yeah, this is my third one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do them very often. All right, so next step is terracotta. This is Craft Smart Terracotta. 
and this will be a dry brush. So you don't have to rinse your brush out. Don't worry about it. Just work the excess paint off. Again, I'm going to load up with terracotta. I'm going to work most of it off. All right, and then again, this is a, a much lighter application, but nicking at it perpendicularly. Okay, just like that. And now we're starting to get a rich color building up for us. Last color is uh, Americana Honey Brown, but any sort of like uh, tan cinnamonish color will do. And again, this is a dry brush. This one's a little more sporadic, so you leave some of the orange areas uncovered, and it gives some nice chaos to the uh, to the wood grain. All right, so there we go. That is a wood plank, and when it dries, it it's very nice, very rich looking. Now we're going to need a bunch of these, which would again be very boring. So earlier today, I prepared a whole bunch of them and you do them on both sides. It's helpful, I found uh, mentally <laughs> to uh, just make, if you think you'll be using this technique in the future for your wood, just sit down one day and make hundreds of them and knock it out. You'll make a lifetime supply for yourself so you never have to do it again. All right, we have any uh, picks here? Tip for new painters, avoid apple barrel for this sort of stuff. Takes forever to dry, doesn't spread well. Yeah, I agree. Apple barrel, um, I, I think of all the crafting paints, I've found that apple barrel is the, well, it's literally the bottom of the barrel. I mean, it's properly named. It's also the cheapest, but yeah, you're pretty much guaranteed to need two coats for everything. Folk Arts, notably better. Americana is pretty good. All right, oh, 50 people tuned in. All right, glad you're all here. For anyone who uh, di didn't join at the beginning, later on I'll be given a, a code word um, and you'll, you can go and post that on my Facebook page um, where it says to comment and you'll be entered into a raffle. Okay, so we got our wood planks done. The first thing we're gonna build is a shelf. So we'll get a bunch of sticks here. And uh, you can make them however tall you want, but I'm actually gonna go for two inches. It's a good standard height. For cutting these popsicle sticks, I recommend uh, wire cutters. And when you cut with these, you'll notice that one side is, is meant to be uh, flush cut and the inside is, is not, it's tapered. The, this inside here can splinter what's, what's on that side. So with the good side of your project should be on the flush cut side. All right, so I'm gonna cut off the end, cut off the round end, then measure two inches, cut that. Okay, check it, it's good. Two more. All right, so I'm gonna need five of these planks to start with. This is gonna form the backing of the shelves. Lots of ways to do potions. We'll cover one, the way that I do them in a sec, but uh, if anyone wants to describe their method, this would be a good place to do it. All right. I got five planks and I'm gonna need to attach them. When I do this, uh, or whenever I'm working with tiny pieces for that I need to put together, I use packing tape and just lay it down face up and start putting the planks on there. And this will make sure they stay perfectly aligned while we attach them together with whatever method we're about to use.
There we go. All right. Now we need to do a top, a bottom, and two middle shelves. So we're going to need four more lengths of, actually, so it happens that five popsicle sticks is about two inches, but let's double check. It's actually one and seven eighths. So two inches, a bit light. What are you guys talking about? Very much served by the Zern of your rhino. rhino. Oh, you like the rhino? Okay, yeah. I did that series on uh, Poor Hammer 40K as I was getting first getting into 40K. I think everyone knows, or, or maybe you don't, but I, I did an uh, editorial talking about why I think everyone should give Wargaming a shot. Even if you're an adamant role player, um, it deserves a shot in my opinion. All right, Matthias, finally catch bad times if you live in Europe. 3 a.m., thank you for tuning in at 3 a.m., I appreciate it. Uh, does the tape not pull off the paint? No, it doesn't, that's a good question, but popsicle sticks, wood is very porous, very fibrous. It, it sucks in the paint, and uh, no, it doesn't chip the paint off. If you were to do something like plastic, underneath if that were the original piece then yes that might be a good uh, concern on that note we're about to hot glue directly onto paint uh, for that same reason it's not an issue i found that uh, the connection is plenty strong enough so um, just a thin bead of hot glue along one edge toward the bottom and then we'll get one of these planks put on here like that. Okay, do the other side. So these, this is the top and the bottom as it's uh, standing up. Now you may think the, uh, the hot glue that bulges out um, that you can see is kind of unsightly, and yeah it is. If you want a really pristine, professional, you know, a really nice looking thing, Use white PVA glue, take the time. I use hot glue wherever I can because it's instant and I can move on. And when you're three feet away from the table, you really don't see, you know, hot glue bulges. It's, it hasn't been an issue for me. All right, the uh, two shelves in the middle, just kind of eyeball a third and two thirds of the way. There we go. I think this is by far the longest of the five projects we're doing tonight. All right, so here we are so far. And now those back planks are tied together so we can take the paint right off and see the back is good. All right, so it's coming together pretty nicely. Uh, let's see here. Demon Jester J, hello. Just saw your live stream. Thank you for the inspiration. Germany, again, 3 a.m. Thanks for tuning in, man. Appreciate it. Um, how long do you stream? This should not take more than an hour. We should do with, be done with the projects in less than an hour. Precision and attention to detail. Yes, thank you. It's a, a masochism of sorts, but anyways. So now we need to do the uh, sides. That's all that's left. And these will, again, be two inches. So you can see what I mean by uh, prepare a whole bunch of wood planks and just have a lifetime supply. You go to your bin, boom, you get a plank. You don't have to stop and make new ones because there are a bunch of steps to it, as you just saw. And the uh, last thing you want is to be stalled in a project, especially when you have like overnight wet work that you're waiting to dry. All right, so we'll just do a bit of, and make sure I stay in frame here. You know what, I'm gonna do a, a little marker for myself. All right, so this square right here, this black dot's my center. All right, I'll stay here. <laughs> Sorry about that. So a bit of hot glue along all these edges, including the shelves for strength. And we'll attach.
and the other side. So, on a side note, I mean, this is this. If you make little books, this is a good bookshelf too. But good standard shelf. Um, DMG actually did bookshelves a long time ago as part of his uh, one of his early episodes. Uh, I think this is like nearly identical. He does some stuff with matchsticks, or but um, yeah, I just I like to do my wood differently. I really think that the popsicle sticks and the, the wood grain and then this particular paint kit. Just gives a nice, rich look to it. So, again, I know it's a cheap camera. Um, hopefully, you saw the picture I showed at the very beginning, and I'll show it again later. All right. So, all right. Do we have some buffering going on? Okay. Sorry. Now we need to make some potions for the potion rack. So, here's how I do them. Earlier in the live stream, I showed you the, brand, the exact brands. So here is a bead from that rainbow kit. Just the colored bead. And here is one of those Toho seed beads. It's very tiny. You probably can't see it very well from there. You can see this bag, I actually moved all of them into this bag from the half moon thing, but uh, you get a great variety from that rainbow kit. Stripe ones, all different colors, different sizes, different shapes. There's like a thousand in there. So this has lasted me several years. All right, so the way I do potions, pretty simple. Um, a lot of people use like pins to help hold the two beads together. Um, and that certainly is gonna be strong. Again, I, I like to go fast. So on the bead, I'm just going to apply a dollop of hot glue. And then with needle nose pliers, I'm gonna attach the top. Just stick it on there. Potion. I think I have two colors of the tops, a silver and a gold. Um, so again, this would be pretty boring if I were to sit here and make a bunch of those. So, I made a whole bunch earlier. Uh, here's a couple other examples. So they're pretty convincing. Right, let's take a sec here. What are you guys talking about? Argentina, welcome. <coughs> Star Wars terrain. Okay, clean sci-fi, right? Always use more interior. Yep, it's always good to cr you can craft features for your dwarven forge tiles. Oh, good. I'm glad you like the encounters. Meister Umbreon. Appreciate it. All right, once again, you could use white PVA glue to attach these and get a clear finish. If you're careful enough with your hot glue gun, you can do this. If you know how to wisp kill, so just a dab in here, and then a few twists to kill the wisp. And then I like to use the uh, needle nose pliers to stick it in there. Easy. So you can take all your potions that you've made and hot glue them in there, all right? That would be fairly boring. So here is a finished one. And put in some permutations, you know, big ones, small ones. Here's one that's tipped over, four per shelf, three per shelf. Help make it look a little more natural. All right, so that is the shelf, potion shelf. Let me know if you have any questions or comments on that. All right, those potion bottles look familiar. Devious Dungeons painting. Yes, I'm, that's how I've always done them. And um, uh, first time they showed up was episode seven, which was the potion vendor that I did. And uh, as I pointed out there, the idea I think we I first saw from. Uh, DM Brad over on the old forums. I don't know if anyone still goes to the the DM Scotty forums. All right. 
Spilled potion. That's a good idea. Yeah, a little bit of hot glue and paint it with a any kind of color. Yep, that's that works. All right, uh, let's do a brewing stand. All right, or a table, brewing table. So this is pretty easy. Again, we're gonna need some two inch planks. And then I'll show you how to do the uh, the bendy twisty tube thing. Oh, Brad. Okay, excellent. You take a different name. Yeah, man. We've gotten a lot of mileage out of your technique for potions. All right, Master Umbrian, are those planks popsicle sticks? Yeah, they are. Um, if you joined late, um, at the beginning of the live stream, we walked through how to how to turn a popsicle stick into these planks. Um, so you can revisit the live stream afterwards, or I will be doing a dedicated episode with uh, my normal, you know, 12 minute or so to, uh, instruction on how to do these. I'll be doing that next week or, or so. For people who don't want to sit through an hour long of tutorial. All right, so anyway, I got two planks here. They're two inches, and I'm just gonna make some cross pieces. Don't need to be real precise. Just gonna check what's needed and do it. And then uh, on one side, oh, I forgot to texture these on both sides. That was lucky. Just a thin bead of hot glue across and attach one. Same for the other side. All right, easy enough. So that's a simple table. Now, uh, for the, I'll say the key component. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't be this, wouldn't be a wild video without that music. Yep, it's called Lord of the Land by Kevin McLeod. Uh, the humble paper clip, and this is the kind that's coated in plastic. So it gives it that sort of uh, pipette tube look. Just gonna unbend it, straighten it out. All right, nice and straight. Now we take a kebab skewer or a tool or anything really that's, that's sort of skinny. And uh, gonna start about three quarters of an inch in and wrap it around. Yep, and uh, you might have to chop the paper clip down to length if it's too long, but these happen to be like the perfect length for me, so don't have to bother with that. <clears throat> okay. So that's how we get that, you know, uh, mad scientist curly tube pipette effect. You just wrap it around. Okay. All right, now we're gonna pick two beads from that rainbow collection that are kind of bigger. It's good to pick bigger ones for this. And what we'll do is, gonna, it helps to have the, uh, the smaller style of hot glue gun. I've never needed the bigger size, so I always use the, what is it, quarter inch thick glue sticks. This is the one that Scotty recommends, but anyway, I'm gonna do this quickly because the glue is gonna to start to cool very quickly as it gets in there, but we're gonna inject it in there into the tube and then insert one end of it. Okay, and then inject glue into the other one and quickly insert the other one. Just like that. Piece of cake. And then uh, we'll just hot glue those onto the table, wherever we like, really. Hold of a sec. All right. Good to go. So that's that. And then a couple other things are good. I mean, it is a brewing station, so how about just uh, 
one other potion for good measure. And then, uh, you know, raid your bits box. If you, if you don't have a box like this that has all your leftovers from your trips to Michael's or your crafting store, you go to the beads aisle and you just buy a whole bunch of whatever catches your eye. You never know what you might need. I think I went two years ago, I spent like 50 bucks, but I've had this supply of beads ever since. And everything I'm doing tonight is just pulling from that stock. There's nothing new. So this was one kind of cool bead that I noticed. It's got five fake gems and then a big hole in the middle. So I'm gonna attach that. And this could be like a filter or a prism or something like that. And then there is that hole in the middle, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a uh, Swarovski. All right, good, we're back. Sorry about that. All right, so I have no idea how much uh, you saw or didn't, um, but here is the, uh, I think you saw the gem. Here's the finished thing. All right, one sec. All right, so that's the brewing table. All right, my hot glue gun has started doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> oh yeah, that is kind of what's like. <laughs> I get it. That's, I tie it back so that it uh, it'll stand up straight. I'm left-handed, and it needs to be on this side, and the outlet's over there, so it tips over just with that, with the cord in the way. All right. <clears throat> Uh, next, we're going to do a totem, and this is sort of like the uh, energy focuser of the room or something. But again, this is going to be really easy. It's going to take about one minute. These are just a bunch of beads that I uh, found from Michael's, pulled from my collection, and here's a one-inch washer. So I'm going to take this big sort of Arabian-looking, arcane-looking thing and a bunch of hot glue and apply it to the washer. Then this colorful thing with a, a large hole in the middle. And lastly, this really cool sphere. It's got a bunch of, uh, looks like wires intermeshing with each other. Really cool bead. There, it's that easy. Oops, I glued it to the bottom. So, it's a totem. It's a good, I mean, you could do anything with this, whatever the, you could call it whatever you want. It's just a decor for the, the room. All right. Let's see. All right, so next we're going to do uh, a reagent bin. So this is, you know, alchemy is actually not potion making. It's turning metals and other things, I think. So, um, this will be a reagent bin, raw materials in bins that are used to make make the potions. Okay, so jumbo popsicle stick. These are always right next to the normal popsicle sticks at the crafting store. So chop off a smooth end. And then we're going to, we don't even need to paint it because you're not actually gonna see this. And how long does this need to be? Uh, two and a quarter. So it's gonna be two and a quarter inches. Okay. 
And now we go to our planks and we're gonna need two of them that are two and a quarter inches. Let's see what else is going on. 46, all right, we didn't lose too many with that crash, that's good. After we're all done, I can uh, show you what else I'm working on right now that's coming up in near-term episodes if you want. All right, now we're going to attach these to the jumbo, but it, if it makes sense, we're not gonna put them, we're not gonna attach them on it, we're gonna attach them to the side of it. So, apply the hot glue to the plank along the long edge, and then butt it up against the jumbo stick. Let it cool. I have to have one ready. And then we'll do the other side. Okay. And now we need, so we have this uh, sort of trough made, and we need to cut the short ends. Roll for damage, thanks for coming by. Whoops. I know why that happened. Always make sure your glue is very hot. I turned it off by accident a few minutes ago. Oh, and it's off now. Darn it. <laughs> All right, we gotta let the glue heat back up. That must have happened when I set it down. <laughs> the show must go on. I'll force it through. All right. Okay. Should be hot enough now. By the way, if the person who suggested this is on, feel free to chime in. It was a great suggestion. Want to do something different. I was doing tiles or big terrain lately, it seems, so getting back to the little stuff, the details, is refreshing. It's what made me, after all. <laughs> Alright, so we got our bin now. And now we just need to make two partitions here. And those, we'll just see how big they need to be. Mark it. And then... Uh, notice if you do the math these are going to be too tall so I'm actually going to cut them lengthwise and snip off I don't know two millimeters something like that and then this unfinished rough side will be the one that's downward as we glue it in Do the other one. Uh oh, we were gone again. Looks good on my end. Hopefully that was just just for you, Greg. <laughs> I know my bandwidth's good. I checked it earlier. I got eight megabit upload. And I deliberately chose uh, lower res for this stream, 720p, to make sure it'd be all right. Okay, here's, uh, here's our bin. And now we're going to just fill them up about halfway with hot glue. Just inject it in there. Yeah. About halfway. It might look rough at first, but as the heat spreads with itself, it's going to even itself out, give a nice smooth surface. Mmm, when you blast out hot glue like that, there's like a barbecue kind of smell. I don't know why it smells that way. 
but that's what it reminds me of. <clears throat> and different types smell differently. Sure bonder, very strong mesquite, if you will. I have found, if you, this is the CC better that Scotty recommends. If you bought this, the uh, Art Mines glue is not good in it. I have to like force it through. It just, it doesn't grab very well. We really gotta get the, the matching brand, I think. Again, you twirl for a wisp, wisp, wisp kill. So these are filled up just to, uh, so that the, what we're gonna do is apply glitter and we don't want the glitter to just be on the bottom of the bin. So this makes it look like it's full of, you know, gold or silver or whatever color glitter we're doing. All right, so while those are cooling, uh Okay, looks like we went down again, but now we're back up. Let me check. <coughs> Sorry about this, guys. I don't know why we keep dropping. All right, so here is the legs on it, and we got the hot glue filled in the bins. Now we're going to get our standard white PVA glue. Elmer's is fine and just drop some in there to cover up the hot glue. Actually, you should wait until the hot glue is cooled. Whoops. So we'll do that. While I'm waiting, let's see, anyone? Ah, glitter, okay. Uh, this is um, really, really fine glitter. I don't like big flakes of coarse glitter. I like the very fine stuff that shines nicely. So we're gonna do uh, gold, silver, and diamond. Or should we do a different color? While this is cooling, uh, what colors should we use? The first three that I see show up in the chat are what we'll use. Which three colors? There's a 30 second delay, so that's why I'm waiting. Red, okay. Red, okay. So. Silver and blue. All right, those will work. So a bit of white PVA glue, just plain old Elmer's glue all. Not the stuff that you get for uh, you know a kid's school project, but glue all. And we'll spread that out. Okay, and some scotch tape. So as we apply the glitter, we don't want it to get in the wrong bin. So we use scotch tape. To cover the parts that we don't want to get glitter in yet. We'll cover up the middle one. Silver. Take that back up. 
This is a, I've found a good way to store glitter. Through the blue. And lastly is going to be the red. We need to dump out the excess, put some tape over these other two bins. And I'm trying to go fast for sake of, uh, you know, so you guys don't get bored. Normally you would go at a more measured pace and this would be a lot neater. Okay. The finer the glitter, the more expensive it is. These were it's like 10 bucks for these little packets, so they weren't exactly cheap, relatively speaking. And I try to use good practices to save as much as I can. All right. There we go. Very nice. Argentina. Cool. Glad. F Thanks for joining us. Okay. Glitter is the bane of tidiness, so just get rid of it now. Ball it up. Don't let it give it a chance to escape. Throw it out. All right. So one more look. Here's the finished reagents bin. It's our fourth project. Sapphire, Ruby, and Silver Dust. Yeah, nice. I like it. All right. And then the last feature is going to be an enchanting table. And this one's fairly easy to do also. Oh, I need another sheet of paper. Okay. So first we'll start with our washer. And uh, this is a one inch washer. I'm going to chop some planks to be one and a quarter inch so that they hang over a little bit. Okay. All right, now we're going to attach these to the washer. The washer is going to be two things. It's, it's a good mounting point for us. It's also going to be a visual guide to help us cut a circle. So a bit of hot glue, attach it to the center. One on the side and the other one on the other side. All right, so we have a square table, and we can, again, remember what I said earlier about the uh, using the correct side. So the flush cut side, we want here. All right, and we're just gonna start nipping away and chipping away to make a circle shape. Don't try to take off too much at once or it could splinter. So we just nip away, eyeball it into a circle. here so I don't take off the fingertip. Okay. Fairly good looking circular tabletop. All right. And here's a wood bit that you probably recognize if you've been to any crafting store. There's usually something like it in the uh, random assorted wood bits bag that you can buy. So, uh, simply a ring of hot glue and attach the washer, the tabletop. Okay, now from here, you can paint this base exactly as you would the wood. I'm not gonna waste your time showing you that. I'll show you how to finish up the tabletop. Again, just 
paint it brown, paint it however you want, really. Um, the finished product, here's uh, an example of the finished one. So I just painted it with the exact same paint kit as before. So for the top, uh, let's see, should we, uh, James Habelmore, are you still watching? If you are, should we use green or blue? I'm going to give it 30 seconds. James was the first one to join the chat this evening, or one of the first ones. But he said it was his first time doing a live stream. Okay, seeing no chat answer. Um, all right, anyone else? Should we do uh, blue or green for our enchanting table? In the meantime, we'll get going with this. Some white PVA glue. And then I'm gonna paint on a symbol. Just any kind of symbol you like. Any kind of mystical looking symbol. So I'll do a, let's do a triangle. If the white isn't showing up, it's not thick enough. Okay, first one I saw was green. Okay, we'll do green. Well, you know what? I'll go with, let's just go with majority. Green, blue, green, 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 blue. Uh, still green, okay. So we'll paint on a symbol in white PVA glue. And, uh, all right, good. Green. And we'll dust that with glitter. There. Seal it back up. And dump the excess. So we got the symbol painted on there. Kind of gives the glitter gives it the illusion that it's glowing. And uh, let's add one more finishing touch. I'm gonna go to my bag of crystals and get uh, there's a green one right there waiting for me. Uh, you know what? For the people who said blue, I'll do a blue crystal. There. Whenever you apply these, no matter what kind of glue you're using, I find that it's helpful to use needle nose. So, enchanting table. All right, and again, you would paint the, brow, the base up brown. Okay. All right, now what I'd like to do is show you all five pieces in context on some tiles to show you how it might be used to actually make the workshop itself. And then we'll, uh, we'll go to Q&A. Also, at this point, I will tell you the... Uh, the pass, not the password, the keyword, whatever it is. So again, if you go to the Wylox Armory Facebook page, you'll see a post I made about an hour or two ago, and it says, post a comment here with the keyword. The keyword is POTION, all caps, P-O-T-I-O-N, POTION. If you post a comment there, you'll be entered into the raffle to win the stuff that we've made tonight. And, uh, that'll end when the live stream ends. So this is your time to go and do it. All right. So if you haven't seen these before, these are my tavern tiles from episode 10. And the wood planks are made in exactly the same way. The outside is foam, but anyway, let's uh, set these up.
And uh, here's a metal door. I think this was episode 31, I can't remember. But it's a clip-on feature, so you just pop it on and it sticks there. And we've got our reagents bin. We could put the totem in the middle, maybe the brewing stand on the side. Um, we'll put the potion shelf right there. And you know what? Let's put our re other reagent bin that we just made. And here's an enchanting table. All right, and while we're at it, why not also the other brewing table that we just made tonight? And a couple paper miniatures. If you like these cardstock miniatures, I can show you how to make them with nothing more than Google image search and some Photoshop. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get these down to uh, eye level for you with the camera, so just give me a sec. All right, um, microphone's on the other side of me now, so I don't know how well you can hear me, but it's a pretty cool effect. It, it looks good in person. That fine glitter really sparkles a lot. So again, some people make treasure piles with uh, large flakes. I don't. Here's a brewing stands. Yeah. All right. So there it is. Uh, not quite in real time because, uh, you know, I prepared some things ahead of time, but I'm going to head back to uh, Feng Shui is off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, just give me 10 seconds. I'm going to move the camera back over to the computer so I can talk to you guys. And I'm back. All right. All right. So awesome project. Thank you, Matthias. Glad you guys liked it. So you can see, um, once you get the hang of those wood planks, or if you just knock out a big collection of them, if you put that aside, you can see that the preparation of these and being able to build them, we just did it in an hour. So, um, and there's lots, lots you can do with it. Again, if you're new to the channel, you can uh, check out episode seven of the channel, which is the potion vendor. First place I explored all these. Again, if you didn't hear earlier, um, my inspirations were uh, Ryan Beesicker for the wood kit, also goes by Curafin on the forums. DM Brad, uh, also known as, uh, he has a channel called Devious Dungeons Painting, I think it was. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, I'll scroll up and find it. So, but anyways, um, yeah, so other than that, what's been going on? Uh, new workbench. So I built that thing uh, last weekend. My wife's Christmas present to me was to move her desk out of the way a bit so that I could move my desk to here where it is and free up that entire wall. So I used to have that much. The workbench was that big, and now, now it's this big. So I'm doing much much better. Um, I'll show you real quick something I'm working on for an upcoming episode. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a large sort of eldritch looking facility. I actually intend to use it as a Necron Tomb World terrain, but with a little bit different paint scheme, you could easily trick it up to be anything else you want. This hole right here is for wiring. There's gonna be a lighted feature there. Uh, again, if you're new, I've talked about how to build your own custom lighting circuits, episode 56 or 57, one of those. You don't have to know anything about electricity or circuit design. It walks you through all of it.
you can see uh, right here, right here, this white bracket, that's what the camera was sitting on. That's how I shoot episodes of Wylock's crafting vids. I use a better camera for the actual episodes. But. Quick tour of your work area. Yeah, we could do that. Why not? One sec. You play Necrons too. That's good. I play them because they're technically the only good guys in the whole story. We were here first. All right. Tour of the work area. Oh, I forgot to mention. So these, these are the feet of an Imperator Titan. And the pipes there is going to be the leg assembly. Uh, that's a big project. Um, I'm aiming for hopefully episode number 100 will go big. Imperator Titan. Anyway, I keep s supplies and scraps down here. Uh, it's a new 2 by 8 foot workbench. I'm going to do an episode in the near future on how to build this workbench. My wife's idea. It's a great idea. Storage. should recognize some of the stuff up there from older episodes. Uh, moving along. I haven't had time to really move in yet, so all these tools are just lying out. I want to have proper places for them. It'll be much more organized in the future than this. But uh, needed to get ready for tonight. Airbrush. Love my airbrush. Here's how I've been seeing what you guys are chatting to me about with my wife's laptop. Here's where we just were. This is my, uh, this is the light that I use for shooting episodes, including my very sophisticated light box, light diffuser. It is a sheet of paper. No, it's not a fire hazard. I know what you're thinking. It's not. It's fine. Flocking of various sorts. Sand. Um, uh, foliage. There's the Proxen hot wire cutter. And here is the, uh, this is my version of the Shifting Lands fence that they, that uh, Black Magic Craft was talking about. So I just made my own out of foam. Also made my own circle cutting jig for it. Just a toothpick. Glues and sealants. Paints down here. Uh, cardboard shelves because I was just running out of space. Double corrugated cardboard, the best. And then here's bins of various supplies. Foam board, uh, random stuff. Yep. So that's, that's my entire work area. Hopefully, I really hope I didn't fall out during that. I know we've been breaking up. Did I break up at all? Those light bulbs have been known to bake cupcakes. Yeah, the ignition temperature of paper is like 600 degrees. It's And it's an LED, it runs a little bit cooler. Any plans for a monster craft video in the future? Uh, by monster, do you need do you mean a large episode? If so, then yes, I'm doing an Imperator Titan. If you mean making crafting some kind of monster miniature, no, nothing. I don't know how to do organic stuff. I can do architecture and tiles and stuff, but when it comes to people and monsters and anything organic, I, I don't know. It's just not my forte. I don't know anything about it. I'm not. A, I have zero training in artist or artistry or anything like that. Uh, where do you get your double corrugated cardboard? Um, boxes left over from shipping boxes. And if you don't get a lot of boxes, um, the trifold display boards at the um, like Office Max or Staples, the kind you would use for a kid's project display like a science fair, those tri-folding things. Those are either made of foam or double corrugated cardboard. Rizzle Geek, thanks for joining. We'll see you next time. Four <laughs> yes, duh, I, I had a complete, my brain took a vacation there. Yes, 451. Nonetheless, I've been using this setup for a couple years now. Never had an issue, but that's me. Maybe I'm an idiot. I'm not advocating that you touch anything to light bulbs.
You guys are right. Gelatinous cubes with the glue gun. Yeah, that's a, that's a good first project for anybody. I did that too. You can use the clear, uh, hard clear stuff that's on the front of a box, you know, like a toy, so you can see what's inside of it. That stuff is awesome. Isolation foam. What is isolation foam? Let's see, did I miss anybody? Meister Umbreon, do you, uh, I'm relatively new, so I never knew anything but 8th edition. Do you really like 8th edition? I also, I also have heard horror stories about GW, but so far, my year and a half being a customer, I really like them. Organic stuff with isolation foam. Oh, okay. I see. I guess the is, it's not so much the material, it's the being able to visualize it. If you asked me to draw a person's face on paper, it would look like a stick figure. It, look, it would look horrible. I can't... So look, forget three-dimensional sculpting of a creature. I can't even draw one. Andrew, appreciate it. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can show you guys for the evening. Um, 3D printing. I don't know uh, if you guys are into it or not, but this is my 3D printer, and I love it. There's a product that just uh, Kickstarter that just finished for something called Necroplex, which is um, I'm having a ton of fun with it. It's like if you want, if you love Legos and you love Warhammer 40k, you'll love Necroplex. But the the printer has been great for me. Um, I use it for doodads and stuff for filling the gap. I don't use it to print full scenery pieces. I like crafting. I don't think 3D printing is economical for doing like a, a cathedral. It would take it takes four days to print something like that, and in my opinion, it's it's more fun, it's cheaper, and uh, in some ways, it is easier to just craft it. What I do is like if I need a uh, a weird gear or some kind of weird I don't know, like a structural angle thing or just some weird piece, I whip it out in 3ds Max and then I can print it and use it in my crafting. So it's been a helpful tool for when I come across needing a, a bit or a doodad that I don't have. We love Eighth, good, okay. Love to do, see you do a huge terrain board like for Kings of War. Uh, well, one thing, one sec. So for Steve Roberts, I should never say never, but I don't foresee myself doing a huge terrain board because I, I like those rollout mats that um, Frontline makes. But this is a big um, line of sight blocking terrain. It's seven inches tall and about 16 inches wide. And I'm making a whole set of these. There's another one you can see right here. The glue is drying on it. That's a, even bigger than this one. So this is a combination of a bunch of different ideas I've seen other people pose and into what I feel, what I like the best. So how to make edges that look natural like this out of XPS foam. Um, what colors to use so that this looks good on ice, meadows, desert, alien, etc., whatever. This is a nice bland generic paint scheme that, I, that looks good on all of them. So I've been a lot of experimentation with this one to get my master terrain set. Totally your fault I got back into 40k after the void shield generator and neck deep in space marines. Yeah, it's a good, from what I understand, it's a good time to get back in. Gaming group stopped playing 40k and now all are back. That's good. Yeah, the edging, so the edging on this is, I mean, I'll go, it's not my idea. I'll be citing the video where where I found it. It's some guy who has a, 
it's not a dedicated channel and it's not a very well made video but the idea is excellent on how he did it so I'll be showing how I implemented his idea here you know what you were good enough to tune in so I'll just give you the you take your your utility knife you slash at the edge four or five times all the way around then you slash at it perpendicularly all the way around then you take the back side of the knife and you rasp at it and your chunks will little chunks will fly off and you'll end up with this look Looking forward to more collaboration. Good. Yeah, we got some fun stuff planned. Uh, in early 2018, we have a community dungeon build that we're looking to do. Favorite board games? Um, I like Stratego and Risk. I'm really not into board games. I like tabletop RPGs. I am, have a newfound love for war gaming. Board games, though, uh, I've just not gotten into, really. Everyone suggests Catan, I know. Um, I guess I have to do my due diligence and give it a shot. Theo from Brazil? Good, thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm not centered here. Uh, does anyone have ideas or things they'd like to see in future episodes? I have the next five or six planned out, but after that I'm looking for ideas is the investment in the proxen table worth it I think absolutely I have nothing to gain by saying that I'm just telling you that thing is incredible it is like a lightsaber it it cuts so so well um, I just I love it, it you, and you can do so much with it I think it's absolutely worth it for the Proxen. For making metallic, almost crystalline battle boards, trying to make something like that Realm of Metal from Age of Sigmar for our local green. I would have to look into that. I'm not familiar with that Realm of Metal. For metallic, almost crystalline battle boards. For the whole board, I would imagine if you dry brush with a metallic on whatever it is, stone or whatever, sand, whatever you've used to flock it, that should give it a nice speckle, but I don't think I'm qualified to give you a good answer there, uh, gutter runner. World War II houses for bolt action. So modern and you know historical are genres that don't interest me at all. That said, building a house, I mean the fundamentals, the architecture is there, it can be applied to a fantasy cottage or something. So. European, let me catch your name too, because I like to cite people. More vehicles. I assume you mean for 40k. Okay. Chaos in the old world. You play this, but you play the chaos guy. Oh, that sounds awesome. Okay. Golems would be cool. Hangman's gallows. Or guillotine yeah so I could think uh, yeah I can see how you could use the wood technique from tonight to uh, to easily make something like that tile sets would work great for Necromunda a bunch of people have mentioned that yeah so uh, and I did the futuristic tiles I think episode 43 which did not come out very good I should not have published that episode it was rushed and the paint job is terrible but the the math the fundamentals behind it were sound at least Fantasy Vehicles Transportation, yeah. More Dungeon Scenarios, yeah, so the full-on modules, obviously I'm writing a whole module and getting it published, That that's a big investment. I'm lucky to get one of those a year. I've only done three of them. But I've tried to do a few of those encounter episodes, which is like a, a single room or not just a room, but you know, a full encounter to so th so things that a DM use for terrain to zero. yeah okay so more scenarios snow ice terrain that is on the list I have not done any yet it is on the list for the near future I have a little more experimentation to do so no I don't have any tips I am not qualified to give you any tips yet 
Greetings from Germany at 4 a.m. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. That is dedication. I'm honored. Um, would like to see some vids using the Proxen. I've used it in like every episode I've done for the past 12 episodes or so, but I guess I just don't show it explicitly. Headsman's Blocker Gallows added. Merry Christmas, just got into the stream, Cyrus. It's go. how's it going? Well, the stream, we, we did the build, and the stream went okay. I guess we dropped out three or four times, unfortunately. Um, which is kind of a bummer. DM screen idea as a dungeon tile clip add-on. Hmm. I have to think about that. Oh, I see. It could be stat boards, monsters, clip on art. Yeah. Um, stat cards, monster art, as clip ons. That's cool. John, that's a good idea. Modular table for urban mechanicus after. Okay, cool. Seth. Um, Alright, more encounter. Alright, that seems to be. A trend. More buildings like the inn. Basing miniatures. Sand base and talcum powder. I just use white PVA glue and then sand and let it dry for about six hours and then paint it up. As a mage in D&D the arcane focus could be a goat leg. <laughs> okay, I'm I don't have context there for that comment, Theo, so I'm not sure what you're talking about. <clears throat> Tiles for a market square for towns. This is this comes up occasionally and I've thought about it and, and it goes into my overall conclusion for outdoor tiles as well. I don't I don't think that outdoor tiles are the right solution for outdoors. The areas are too big. Dungeons are good because it's a tight area. And the sizes often matter mechanically for puzzles and traps and stuff like that, and for combat. Outdoors, it's just, it, at least the way that I run games, it's so much less important. So I don't worry about a grid out there, and uh, I would just put down buildings and store storefronts and stuff like that. Um, but that said, um, features instead of tiles for a market square or town. Next idea for a live stream could be a torture chamber, cages, Iron Maid. Oh, okay. Torture chamber implements. Uh, when true tiles will be open lock compatible, been slicing to make. Yeah. So Rothgar, the um, we've been working on that for for like a month, two or three months, and we're having issues with with restoring manifold after we slice the odd geometries. I assume you're talking about the odd geometries pack. So I really do apologize for the delay on that. Um, hopefully the odd geometry tiles are used so infrequently that it's really not an issue. But if it is, I can tell you it's on our to-do list along with um, the next release. We have a, a new idea for the next expansion set. Again, I'm really sorry that that's uh, taken so long. Elvish and Dwarven themed. Runehammer's here. All right, Hank's here. Awesome. Spring-loaded traps be possible for tiles. Might fly off the table. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Who came up with the TCG logo? Uh, DMG came up with the vector shape of it, and then I created a 3D model of it, and that's the logo that you see in the corner of the screen right now, the one that's in the animation. Play sand was too coarse. Yeah, so I used play sand for a long time. I didn't even realize that it was too coarse until I bought some Quick Creek construction sand. So you go to the Lowe's or the Home Depot, go to the Home Improvement Store. It's uh, Quick Creek construction sand. It's four bucks for like a 50 pound bag. It's a lifetime supply. And that has some much finer stuff in it. 
festival stalls and decor. Yeah, so Gutter Runner, I actually, you can see an episode, uh, one of the early ones, I actually show you um, like a, a festival stall and I never did an episode on it. It's at the end of the episode where I show you the thing in context. But, and, and, uh, Hello from Vegas. Thematic dice towers. Yep. I have my own opinions on dice towers, but people love them, so I could I could design one if people are interested. Upvote the logo. Cool. Torture chamber suggestion. All right. Dwarven tomb like Balin. Okay. Yeah. So tonight we made a set of five small features to sort of feed a, a room and encounter. Um, the torture chamber idea you guys are on about would be a similar thing. I was also thinking of doing a campsite. So one episode, but you get like five different ideas in it that would uh, go into making a campsite. Do you like seeing like the more epic stuff and the Necron thing I showed you earlier? Or are you liking this format? A bunch of little easier to do things that go into creating an encounter. Or do you like both? Because right now, I, you, as you've noticed, I mix it up. I'll bounce back and forth week to week. Yeah, I like rolling my dice too. I got a lot of good ideas here. Save. I really hope that despite this, uh, the hiccups we had, this all gets saved in one live stream. Mix of both, both, both. All right, yeah. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. All right, <clears throat> well, it's been about an hour and a half, so I think, uh, I think I'm ready to call it. I really appreciate everyone tuning in and all the new ideas. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, uh oh, I think we broke again. Did we? I didn't get to say bye. Okay. <laughs> if we didn't break, this is really awkward TV right now, isn't it? Okay. Alright, so anyway, um, thank you guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, be sure to check out my Facebook page. I'm now, it's 9.55 p.m., so I'm closing the comments in one minute to be eligible. Again, the word potion, comment on that post on my Facebook page. Make sure you're a member of the Tabletop Guild group on Facebook and uh, some other social media, etc., whatever. So, alright, have a good night, guys. Thanks.